Good morning, good evening, good afternoon and welcome depending on what time you're joining me at. This is CMG Talk and this is Catherine Gallagher. So I wonder how your week has been so far. I've been doing a whole series of trainings this week and it has been on different types of behaviours. I've been doing micro aggressions which have been about micro assaults where you know, someone might be described as giving old-fashioned racism, racist comments where they're deliberately saying things that are discriminatory. They often don't recognise it as such, but what they're saying is acting very much in a discriminatory manner. Then you have the micro-insults. Micro-insults, that's where people are unintentionally or unconsciously discriminating saying discriminatory things, behaving in a discriminatory way. People communicate often in micro-insults and they believe they're complimenting someone. They might be saying something about how someone looks, uh, someone's hair, someone's way that they act and, you know, what they, you know, they might be saying something like, oh, because you're Asian, you must be really good at maths and they think that they're actually being complimentary. In fact, somebody's agent will be going, what do you mean? I'm terrible at maths, right? No, I don't want to do engineering or maybe, no, I don't want to be an accountant or I don't want to be a doctor. You know, why are you assuming this? Right? Because I happen to be Asian, right? That's the last thing I want to do. I actually want to be a chef, right? Um, these micro insults and, and then you have the micro invalidations the micro invalidations is where someone is actually saying something that actions or behaviors where they deny what is racist and what is discriminatory they invalidate that they've undermined an individual or a group the struggles they just invalidate it they say it's insignificant. It doesn't matter. It's not happening. Micro invalidations. When I talk about different types of behaviours and what someone experiences, often people will say that they recognise these types of behaviours. They've seen them. They've experienced them. I know I've experienced behaviours like these. People say, and again, this is an example of microaggression. People will say to me, how could you? You're white, you're female, right? You're blonde. Well, how could you possibly have experienced these? I've had partners, right? Um, I've been out with um, partners. I've been out with an, a partner that's been Indian. I've been out with a partner who's been you know, Cuban, Afro-Cuban, right? Uh, I've been out with partners that have been different cultures, right? Um, come from different cultures. Uh, and yes, I'm small, I'm blonde, I'm white. I remember seeing, um, I remember walking down with my um, a guy that I dated. Um, in fact, we were engaged at one point. We were very close. Um, I love this person dearly. They, if they're listening to this, uh, they'll, they'll be going, oh, she's giving me a mention, right? And I still do have very, very fond um, feelings towards this person. And we were walking down, hand in hand, down um, a, a city centre. And this person who, uh, I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to embarrass the person because we did actually, uh, you know, went down a route of education, let me put it that way. Um, but the two of us were walking down the street. He's like six foot. I'm five foot. He's very tall. He's uh, black. He's uh, dark skinned, really dark skinned, black. And as I say, he's kind of Afro-Cuban. I'm small, blonde, you know, petite, you know, right. And we look very different. As I'm walking down, suddenly we hear this female shouting out, well done, and clapping. Just clapping, right? And I automatically think, you know, I wonder what's happened, right? <laughs> I'm thinking, 
oh, right, what are we missing out on? And I'm going, oh, and it was a beautiful day, right? It was a really hot day. Uh, it was, oh, I don't know, it must have been about 20, 23 degrees. And for, you know, where we were, that was very hot, right? And I was like, oh, right, what's happening? With my glasses on, right? And I was like, oh, what's going on? Right, we're missing out on something here. And he's like, no, come on, come on, just keep coming, you know, keep going, right? And I'm looking around and I'm thinking, we're missing out on something. And, and he goes, yeah, I think, I think that that's directed to us. And I was like, huh? <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'm not naive, right? But I can imagine for one second that this individual um, was clapping at us. And sure enough, she was actually clapping at us walking down the street hand in hand. And, I, and, I, and he's like, just ignore it. Come on, let's keep going. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, I cannot ignore this, right? Composed myself, took a breath, and I said, hold on a second. And he's like, it doesn't matter. I said, no, I'm not angry. I just want to understand. I just need to understand. So I walked up and I said to her, I, d I just need to understand here. Can I just clarify? I said, were, were you clapping, you know, for us? And she said, well, yes, I think it's great. And I said, what's great? And she said, I think it's great. You know, the two of you, mixed, mixed couples. And I went, what do you mean? Pardon? And she said, I think it's great, you know. And I said, Seriously, you do realise this is exceptionally racist. And she went, no, 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 you're misunderstanding, she said. It's just, it's just noticeable. And I said, you're making it worse. And she went, what do you mean? I said, you've just brought, very publicly, to everybody around the attention that... And, and and this girl was doing, she was collecting charity, right? <laughs> she was actually there with like a, you know, a, I don't know, a kind of uniform pinafore thing on and she was rattling a tin and she was collecting charity. And I said, you do realise that what you've just done is, is completely un inappropriate. I said, I said, and I'm embarrassed for you. You've just embarrassed the man that I'm with, who I care about deeply, I said, and uh, I'm not sure whether, you know, are you congratulating him for going out with me? Are you congratulating me for going out with him? Are you congratulating both of us for going out with each other? <laughs> and, she, and she just looked at me and she went, um, I said, because quite honestly, I said, no. do not matter how you try to explain this. I said, it's just not okay. And she just looked she stopped and she said she said uh, she hadn't really thought about it that much she said but now you put it that way she said maybe it's maybe it's not okay I said Mary you think <laughs> and she stopped and she looked at me the next thing you see is the supervisor running over and he goes did I just see something did I hear that right did I just see that right and I said I said, listen, the only reason why I've stopped, I said, is because I can't walk past something like that. I said, because it was so public, it was so noticeable. I said, and people around were kind of like, oh. <laughs> people were gasping. I said, and if I'd walked past it, I'd have been telling the man that I'm with, that I care about deeply, I'd be telling him that it's okay. I said, it's not okay. I said, I care about his feelings a lot. I said, and that's not okay. I said, that's not okay. The next thing I hear is the supervisor going, yeah, we can't endorse that. That's not accept accepted. And we're not having people coming out representing our organisation. I said, listen, I said, I need you to understand that it is racist. I said, it's actually you know, a form of microaggression. 
I said, you cannot do that. I said, in any level, it's never acceptable. I said, um, I said, and really what I would want you to do is to understand and reflect on this. I said, I'm here trying to educate you. I said, but I'd suggest that since you're dealing with the public and because we're reasonable people, I think you need to understand that you could have a very different reaction and I'm trying to be compassionate, I'm trying to be uh, empathic, I'm trying to I'm trying to educate here and I would appreciate if your organisation would take this on board and do education within your organisation. I said because this is not surely how you want your organisation surely this is not what your organisation represents. This is not the values this is not about equity, inclusion and diversity and equality. This is not how you represent, surely. And the organisation said, no, this is not okay. You're absolutely right. We're going to do education. And the person said, you know, can I go and shake your partner's hand? I said, why are you asking me? <laughs> My partner's like, no, it's okay. Not because you know being petty or anything but just like that's not necessary i said like, we just want to go on with our day i said but please just be very careful i said because that's unacceptable i said and you can't do that i said that is totally totally not acceptable i said we all have our biases some are unconscious i said but we have to be aware you're in the public you're representing an organization you're here as a charity i said and what you've just done was very insulting very offensive I said, and, um, I'm actually offended, you know, that you would do that to somebody that I cared about. I said, it's not okay. Um, you know. And they were like, can we take your information? Can we take your details? I said, that's not necessary. I said, if it's been learned and it's going to be learned from, you're going to educate. I said, that's that's all I need. Um, I said, but, you know, I said, for me, it's not necessary. I said, but. You maybe you want to actually talk to the person that you've actually insulted. <laughs> My partner was like, so, you know, yeah, that's fine. It's okay, no problem. If that's what you're, you're doing, you're educating, that's fine. You know, no hard feelings, shook their hands, moved on, was very gracious about it. And then said to me, you realise that that happens all the time? And I said, yeah, but not in my watch. <laughs> right. Every time something like that happened, I'd go, no. No, 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 no. I remember sitting at a table and this man, this white man came and sat beside us and said, you could do better. And I said, yeah, I could do better. That's why I'm with him. That's why I'm not with you. I said, can you leave our table? You don't have a seat at the table, right? This is a table for two and it's not for you. You need to leave now. <laughs> he looked at me. He went, huh? I said, yes, goodbye. Parents, like, what you like? No, totally unacceptable, right? You know, treat people with dignity and respect, include people, see people as they are, for who they are, you know, microaggressive behavior, right? You know, if you treat people, you know, and if you do it with a smile, with empathy, and compassion, and education, you know, that's my preference, right? I people know that I try to use humour a lot, not to undermine and not to, you know, take away the seriousness of something, but people are all more likely to engage with you. But if it comes to it and I have to, I'll be like, eh, no, right? But behaviours can be very harmful, can be very toxic and exceptionally hurtful. And often when we are in a situation, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's family, we often hear people say things and do things and they can be exceptionally painful and hurtful. You know, aggress aggressive behaviours, microaggressive behaviours take all types of forms. You know, responding effectively, paraphrasing back, you know, I understand, I think I heard you say this, you know, Ask, you know, is that what I heard? The impact in that, that has made me feel or my partner, you know, has just told me that this is what they felt. 
you know. The reason why I spoke up was because it wasn't their first language and they didn't quite understand or know how to convey it. So they said, would you mind? And I said, no problem. You know? The impact and how it feels, how it is felt, the stereotype, you know, the fact that people use stereotypes, the fact that, that people say things can be exceptionally difficult and very difficult and painful. When somebody says that what we have done, how we have said things, the way that we've behaved, it's important to, to step back, not get defensive, not deny it, listen, open ourselves up and say, you know, okay, I'm hearing what you say. I understand, you know, that what you're telling me that this has been exceptionally difficult or painful, it's been traumatic for you. Your feelings are your feelings. I, I'm not going to diminish or undermine or deny those feelings. I understand and I hear what you're saying. And, you know, we would like to think that we would never as a human being want to cause, intentionally cause another person harm. So not to get defensive is really important. Acknowledge and recognise the unconscious bias that's been displayed, that we've had. Reflect on the hurt and the words that you've caused the hurt. So when we listen, actively listen, we acknowledge I'm hearing what you're saying. I understand where you're coming from. Apologise. If you're going to apologise, mean it. Don't do the sorry, not sorry. Some people say, yeah, right, okay, sorry, whatever. It's not a true apology. And then move forward. When we've owned it, taken ownership and accountability and we've been genuinely sorry, don't hold grudges because that just is toxic and harmful and it's unhelpful. It's being proactive. When we stand up and address these things, in society and for each other it shows dignity it shows that you respect other people you respect yourself you respect other people and you're prepared to see what is and what isn't okay too often people enable or People overlook or people will not address behaviours that are just unacceptable. You hear people behaving in ways that actually cause distress or upset or are actually are just not really considerate for other people. And why is it as a society that we don't say this is unacceptable? Education, training, being able to discuss it. And if we can't do it, and if we do find it's, it's really causing us alarm and distress, then it's important to get an authority, to have support, to have it backed up, and to get an intervention. Never put yourself in harm's way. Never escalate. Never put yourself in a, a situation where you don't feel safe. And within a workplace environment, it's really important that there's diversity. It's really important that CVs are anonymised and that the talent that is acquired, you know, is about ensuring that interview panels are diverse and that, you know, you're selecting people for their skills and their abilities and that you recognise the microaggressive behaviours straight away and you eliminate them we all want to feel that we get the affirmations we get the validations that we recognise for what we do it's important to give feedback I had um, a situation just today where I was getting assistance with moving things around and having things lifted and uplifted and then I was asked to do some feedback on how 
you know, the service was. And I'd said to them, you know, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll give some feedback. And I gave really positive feedback. And they had said to me, well, you know, you really did follow through. And I said, yes, of course. Right. You know, being that person of your word that when you say something, you do it, you follow through. Trust is there. People believe you. People can see that you're a person of your word. And then they know they can trust what you say. Having that honour, that integrity, is that not important? It's the caring, it's the act of listening, it's the acknowledgement and giving praise, being generous. If you think about within your family dynamic, within your friendship groups, if you think about, you know, within your work environment or even with any kind of social interaction groups, you know, have you ever experienced any of these kind of behaviours and how it impacts on you? How do you manage these types of behaviours? Do you address them? Do you draw boundaries? Do you let people know right up front, straight away, rather than harbouring and holding on and letting things build up, do you say, I'm just going to stop you right there. I've just heard that I understood what you've said there was and then paraphrased it back. I'm questioning when you say that because quite those words have had this kind of impact. I feel these words have made me feel. And then if somebody tries to diminish your feelings, you say, well, my feelings are my feelings and, you know, that's how I have felt. It's been quite triggering for me or quite, you know, hurtful or, you know, traumatic for me. And I need you to understand that when you say that, the impact it can cause. Sometimes people say, well, I'm not responsible for how you feel, <laughs> Right. Well, I'm asking you to be aware that when you say these things, it can be triggering, it can be upsetting because, you know, what you've said feels to me judgmental or harsh or unkind. So what I'm asking you to do is not say them to me or say them around me. Drawing a boundary and letting people know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable is really important. If we pay attention to the things that we can control, the things that we can actually affect, looking after our internal voice, making sure that we are reframing things and taking care of our own mental health, making sure we're managing the stress so that it doesn't escalate, giving ourselves praise and acknowledgement and validation, keeping ourselves mindful of the goals that we have in our life and when we achieve them recognise that we know that if we stay healthy within our mind we know that if we recognise behaviours that are unhealthy stereotype type behaviours that we might have or that others might have and how to address these it can actually help us on our way. Sometimes we don't recognise them until afterwards, but when we reflect back, we can see these types of behaviours and how they've been. And then we understand. Because understanding what is and what isn't okay empowers us. And that's what it's all about. It's all about making sure that we are mindful of what works, what doesn't work for us. The types of behaviours that are good for us. The types of behaviours that we recognise that are healthy and productive. We all have types of biases. 
being aware of those biases are really important. The bias that involves beauty when we judge others because we're based those biases on how someone's physical attractiveness is. We might have a bias where we have an affinity. Unintentionally, we favour someone who might share the same kind of qualities as us and we're biased towards that. We might have the horn effect where we focus on the negative aspects of a particular person. That characteristic we don't like. The horn effect is where we focus on that negative characteristic. That's all we see about that person. I really can't take to that person because I just don't like this particular thing about them. And somebody might say, but there's more to them than that. And you say, I can't see past that though. That's all I see. <laughs> That's all I see. And then you have the confirmation bias. Evidence. We seek the evidence to back up opinions because you're looking for the confirmation of that initial assessment to make sure it's correct. Confirmation bias. We also have the conformity bias. We can have our opinions swayed by other people conforming to groups so you might have an opinion but it's quickly swayed because of a group it might be a political group it might be a community group it might be you know to do with a particular group that we might have an affinity for and we might go that's it they've said that I've changed my opinion And we have the attribution bias. That's where we're looking at perceptions of the actions that others have. Standard perceptions. When a person does something, we look and think they're, they've got the luck of the Irish, right? They're lucky, right? They've done something bad. We think it's due to their personality. Or their bad behaviour. Attributes. The biases that we have. And we also have. The halo effect. That's in opposition to the horn effect. Because the halo effect is we focus on one particular great feature about that person. And that's all we see. Right? The halo effect. And of course we have gender bias as well, don't we? The biases that we have. Conscious of our belief systems. If we're aware of common phrases that might be inappropriate. If we use neutral language. In how we correspond and talk and communicate. If we stand up and speak up and we talk about biases when we see them and recognise them so that they become the things that people challenge. And we're more about talking about these things, opening up about these things, seeing them and recognising and acknowledging when things are okay, when they're not, when behaviours are okay and when they're not. The small behaviours to the major Looking and applying and amplifying messages that are shared by someone. The text messages, the messages in, that we see on our Instagram or our WhatsApps or Pinterest or whatever platform you use. And if it's not okay, you say, that's a bias. That's a microaggression. 
breaking stereotypes, making sure that people understand the language and the way it's used and whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable, we say. That I don't agree with. When we talk up and speak up, we might get people who are not happy with the behaviours being challenged. But inside there might be a pause for reflection. They might then stop and think. People take shortcuts. People, you know, filter. They, they filter out information. Our brain does that. We get so much information coming to us that we often filter out information, make and jump to conclusions and assumptions. But it can be really unhelpful because a lot of the information and conclusions we come to are not accurate. When we think about how we communicate, the way we communicate, it can be confusing. The lack of com the meaning is confusing. The signals that we make, miscommunication, we lose the chance because we jump to conclusions, we miss out some important information. We don't see everything. It's and if in doubt, we need to check it out, but sometimes we just don't, we just go with what we've jumped to. It's unfair. It can be self-serving and very counterproductive. And often our memory reinforces. We know that our memory can reinforce information, but it's not necessarily the account that someone else will give. It's just what we've come to conclusion. We often rely on one significant, or we give significance to one piece of information. Often it's the information we receive initially that we pay so much attention to and we often will anchor and put decision-making power onto that. And often we do that if it's the first initial and if it's negative and we'll often be Refocused on that, we'll stack it. We'll often think, okay, the thought of starting again, refocusing, beginning to restart things, often people will say, no, this is it, I've made this decision. It's a preconceived thing, I'm doing it, it's an initial negative experience, I'm prepared to focus often believe what's said, what's repeated and consistently repeated. If it's said long enough and often enough, it must be true. That cascading availability, the cascade availability, if you say it often enough, you say it long enough and often enough, it must be true. Why? Not necessarily. How do you know if it's factual? If in doubt, check it out jumping on a bandwagon effect where people just jump on it because well it's what the group say everybody's going there it's the herd effect isn't it people jump on it but then you eliminate the creative the new ideas and you miss out on huge opportunities if everybody just jumps on. Okay, well, you're going that way, everybody jump on there. Rather than that, just stopping and thinking and say, well, okay, wait a minute, just because everybody's doing that or going on that direction, do I need to? Because we're not questioning if it's flawed.
and then we have to question. Our own beliefs or opinions. We like no relevant information if it conflicts with our own beliefs or opinions. It's almost impossible to change your mind, even when you have proof. If it goes against your beliefs, your opinions, then you'll ignore the information, relevant information. It's called the base rate fallacy. People will say, no, no, that's not what I believe. That's not my opinion. Doesn't matter how much you tell me. Doesn't matter how much proof you give me. I'm standing by what I say. How many times do we hear people say that? You're like, but here's the proof. No, 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 no. That doesn't make it so. You can find that it's fake, 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 fake. Right? No, no, it's fact. No, 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 no. It's not true. <laughs> nobody, nobody can convince somebody that is determined, right? That that's their belief. That's what they believe. That's their opinion. And they're not going to budge from it, even if you can give evidence and you can stack the evidence up. If they're determined to believe something, nothing will shift them. The confirmation bias. People want to be right. So they'll look for anything, any evidence, any information that will make that confirmation. They want it to be true. They'll reinforce that belief and they'll find information that backs it up. Optimism bias. The optimism bias is where somebody overestimates the positive, negates the negative, overcomes a decision or an idea. So what they do is they say they overestimate the positive outcome of a decision or an idea. They're too optimistic. How many times do we hear that where somebody is over, overly stating the outcome? They've been too positive about an outcome. It was fantastic. It was absolutely brilliant. It was totally amazing. And then you ask someone else and they say, do you know what? It was all right. It wasn't brilliant. It could have been better. Or, or, or I heard it was fantastic. I heard it was the best ever. I heard you couldn't get any better. Really? I think that's a, that's an optimism bias because I think they oversold it there. I don't think it was that good. Really? You'd have thought from what they said it was like the best. It was brilliant. Yeah, I think they oversold it there. Pessimism biased. What's that? That's where people overestimate the negative issues that occur. We have to see it as it is. If there's negatives there, we need to recognise, own it. We need to see those, don't we? But you don't want somebody who's overly, overly stating negatives. Oh, no, you know what? It was, it was terrible. Absolutely dreadful. You know, it couldn't have been any worse. Well, what was worse about it? Well, you know, I went in, right, and... You know, I was looking, right? I was looking at the property and I asked for a swimming pool and there was a swimming pool, but, it, you know, but it was it the best swimming pool? Someone else saw the swimming pool and said it was a brilliant swimming pool, right? But it didn't necessarily have everything, but you really couldn't fault it because it was a swimming pool. Right? It was a good sized swimming pool and for the property it was it was really actually the best swimming pool you could expect, especially for what we were paying for it. <laughs> How many times do you have people that say, you know, I went on a holiday and I had a really good really good holiday, but you know, was it the best? Could I had better? Well, you know, I didn't get this, I didn't get that and I didn't get this and somebody else would go in and say, It was brilliant. Sometimes people over 
oversell the negatives. Oversell the negatives. Sometimes people do that because they're trying to get more for their money. More for their money. Yeah. Mm. And then, of course, you get the status quo. I want things to be the same. Even if this isn't the best or ideal, it's it's what I know. Don't really like change. I'd rather have things the same. I like my comfort. I like my comfort zone. I'd rather keep it the way it is because then it's familiar. It's better. Better with what I know. Better the devil I know than actually going with something that I don't know what I'm doing. Or I don't know where I'm going. Or, you know, I don't really know. I'd rather take this route because mm, at least I know where I'm going. Even if Google tells me or some other map tells me that it's going to be an extra 30 or 40 minutes, I'd rather take it because at least I know what direction I'm going in. <laughs> Status quo. Let's stay with what I know rather than going with maybe something that's more efficient, more profitable, maybe better in the long run. Mm, no. Don't want to take myself out of my comfort zone. What's different? Differences are not deficits. Differences are actually giving us wealth, giving us so much more to be able to work with. And sometimes we forget that. And if we acknowledge behaviours and knowledge or attitudes, we're open to change and we're, we come from a respectful place. I'm prepared to reach out to each other with dignity, with respect and having a way of looking at what's what we have in common, shared experiences, being able to see the differences that we might have but seeing those as an opportunity to learn, to grow and to be able to share our uniqueness as well as looking for common ground. Because we're all different. Every single one of us is different to another person. Yeah, If I travel the world, where I go, I will be seen as different. Right? I will have an accent. I will be seen as different. Right? I will have a different culture. I will be seen as a different person. This is when people come to where I am. It's about being open and understanding and being respectful to where you are, to who you're with. And understanding that every single person has basic needs. We need to have water, to have food, to have shelter. We all want to feel we belong. And we need to feel that we have a warmth and a closeness. And then we start growing. And I'm going to put on some information next time about growing and developing as a human being and what that looks like and how we can then transform into our best version of ourselves. If you're interested in that, then please join me. I'm always interested to hear what kind of topics you would like me to talk about. I was asked to drop on about different types of behaviours and challenging behaviours to do with what was topical to snow. And um, because there's been a lot of um, uh, coverage at the moment to do with uh, types of behaviours and culture and racism and gender and age and all types of biases, I thought I would drop this on. We all have our thoughts and our ideas and this is just something that just generally covers. It's not an in-depth cover and, and obviously different people have different ways of covering this and different ways of looking at it and viewing it. I thought I would put on this as a very much a beginning um, introduction.
hopefully you'll find it of interest and you'll find that uh, looking at different terminologies and understanding what they mean and uh, some ex- you know, uh, experiences that I've had. Often when I talk to people about some of the experiences I've had, um, they often are like, Oh, right, okay, because people do make assumptions, right, because of who you are, you know, as an individual, they often think, well, you won't know, and then when you talk, they go, all right, okay, well, it's a different perspective, you know, but my experiences, for me, are just as real, they're just in a different way, in a different experience. So, hopefully you have found this of help and of interest, and you have enjoyed it. Uh, please feel free to message me anytime at stepupcmg at xln.co.uk. If you're interested in um, visiting and giving me some understanding of some topics you would like me to talk about, please feel free to drop me an email. Other than that, please remember to follow me so you don't miss out on any of my episodes. Remember to like, share and download so that the channel um, understands that the episodes are being listened to right? and also I then get an understanding of what episodes you are particularly listening to and enjoying and it's great to see that there are more people from different countries that are also coming on and listening and joining me too and remember that uh, I always am interested to hear your ideas and thoughts and I like to try and talk about things in a different perspective so if there's particular ideas and topics then feel free to give me some ideas. But okay, take good care, have a good evening and let's talk soon. Thanks for joining me. Until next time.